AI continues to be the main driver of the venture capital space, but are we headed for the mother of all bubbles? Welcome back to the AI Daily Brief. Today, we're starting to dig into a question that is something of an emerging narrative, which is the idea that generative AI is in a bubble. Now, one of the biggest progenitors of this thesis is a recent piece by Sequoia called AI's $600 billion question. However, before we get into that piece itself, let's look at some recent data that shows just how significant AI is when it comes to early stage funding. Reuters reports last week, AI deals lift U.S. venture capital funding to highest level in two years. According to PitchBook, in the second quarter of 2024, U.S. VC funding was up to $55.6 billion. That is a 47% jump from the $37.8 billion that U.S. companies raised in the first quarter, but still nowhere near the record high of $97.5 billion from the fourth quarter 2021. Unsurprising if you've been paying attention, a huge part of that went to AI companies. Some of that was in big individual rounds like the $6 billion that went into Elon's XAI and the $1.1 billion that went into CoreWeave. Axios also points out that AI accounted for more than 40% of new U.S. unicorns, i.e. companies worth a billion dollars or more, and that AI VC deals accounted for over 60% of the total increase in venture-backed valuation. In the first half of this year, 13 new AI unicorns were minted in the U.S. What's more, the valuations are higher. AI valuations were double-digit percentages higher than categories like fintech and SaaS. Now, of course, there are questions around where this is all headed. Reuters writes, Despite the increase in deal activity, exits remain challenging. Small deals generated about $23.6 billion in exit value in the second quarter, down from $37.8 billion in the first quarter. They also pointed out that this lack of exits may be impacting venture fundraising itself. PitchBook pointed out that only $37.4 billion had been committed to VC firms in the first half of the year, and that within that total, it was dominated by big firms like Andreessen Horowitz, who closed funds worth more than $7 billion. A big question in the VC side of this market is whether an M&A market for AI startups will start to pick up steam. Discussing companies like NVIDIA and Databricks, VC firm Section 32 CEO Andrew Harrison said, They put down venture dollars first and watched how it evolved and started to shake out. Now I think they're more serious about which pieces of the puzzle they want to own as they're starting to see the emerging winners. In other words, some people are betting that all of this corporate venture capital that's been going into AI companies is going to start to resolve into actual acquisitions as well. Certainly when it comes to AI, VC firms are thinking about how to differentiate. The Information Today reported that Andreessen Horowitz has quietly built a stash of more than 20,000 GPUs in an attempt to win premium AI deals. By way of comparison, that's around the number of GPUs that XAI used to train Grok. The Information writes, The program highlights Andreessen Horowitz's aggressive moves into generative AI in the last two years. It has likely cost the firm hundreds of millions of dollars based on the current cost of specialized AI trips, but they also wrote that it's not clear whether A16Z has purchased the chips or is renting them. A16Z is, of course, not the first firm to do this. Nat Freeman and Daniel Gross, who have been some of the most active investors in the AI space, last year acquired around 2,500 H100s, worth around $100 million, to again provide access to that compute to their startups. At the same time, times may be changing when it comes to GPU. Again, the information writes, Signs the chip shortage has started to lessen have already prompted at least one such investor to change tack. Sarah Guo's early-stage venture firm Conviction last year paid a cloud provider for access to GPU servers and made those servers available to startups at the cost the firm paid. Then as GPUs became more available, Conviction reduced its orders and put some of its servers onto chip marketplaces to sell. They also point out that at least one firm, in this case Sequoia Capital, have called a top to the supply crunch, pointing to a blog post from June where Sequoia partner David Kahn called late 2023 the peak of the GPU supply shortage. And this brings us to this essay, which has been widely referenced as evidence that AI is in a bubble. The essay was called AI's $600 billion question. The AI bubble is reaching a tipping point and navigating what comes next will be essential. The piece at core is a gap between what Khan calls the revenue expectations implied by the AI infrastructure build-out and actual revenue growth in the AI ecosystem. In September 2023, Khan identified that gap as around $125 billion, but now sees the gap at more like $500 billion. In terms of how he calculates this, Khan writes, All you have to do is take NVIDIA's run rate revenue forecast and multiply it by 2x to reflect the total cost of AI data centers. GPUs are half of the total cost of ownership. The other half includes energy buildings, backup generators, etc. Then you multiply by 2x again to reflect a 50% gross margin for the end user of the GPU, e.g. the startup or business buying AI compute from Azure or AWS who needs to make money as well. So what Khan asks has changed since September 2023. First, he says the supply shortage has subsided. That's where he called 2023 the peak of the GPU supply shortage. Second, he says GPU stockpiles are growing. In Q4, for example, about half of data center revenue came from the large cloud providers. 
Microsoft alone represented 22% of NVIDIA's Q4 revenue. Three, Khan writes OpenAI still has the lion's share of AI revenue, saying that while OpenAI is up to $3.4 billion in revenue, the gap between them and everyone else, quote, continues to loom large. Four, and I think this is the most significant, he writes the $125 billion hole is now a $500 billion hole. In the last analysis, he writes, I generously assume that each of Google, Microsoft, Apple, and Meta will be able to generate $10 billion annually from new AI-related revenue. I also assumed $5 billion in new AI revenue for each of Oracle, ByteDance, Alibaba, Tencent, X, and Tesla. Even if this remains true and we add a few more companies to the list, the $125 billion hole is now going to become a $500 billion hole. So at this point, it's worth asking what Khan and Sequoia are really talking about here. And I think this is extremely important because if you just look at, for example, X or the people showing up on the morning business talk shows, you would think that storied venture capital firm Sequoia is calling the entire AI sector a bubble, which is bound to burst and wipe out tons of value, proving that AI is just a hype train. First of all, simply by the actual words of the piece, that's not the conclusion that Khan comes to. He writes, a huge amount of economic value is going to be created by AI. Company builders focused on delivering value to end users will be rewarded handsomely. We are living through what has the potential to be a generation-defining technology wave. Companies like NVIDIA deserve enormous credit for the role they've played in enabling this transition and are likely to play a critical role in the ecosystem for a long time to come. So hardly a full-throated argument that AI is just a hype train. What he does call a delusion is, quote, the delusion that says we're all going to get rich quick because AGI is coming tomorrow and we all need to stockpile the only valuable resource, which is GPUs. So when we're looking at this piece, what Khan and Sequoia are actually talking about is not the value of AI in general. It's not about whether AI startups can find or create big markets. It's not about whether enterprises deploying AI are making a good investment. It is simply and specifically about the capital expenditures of the largest companies, the hyperscalers, that are training their own models, building out data infrastructure, and hoping that at some point this actually turns into real revenue value. In other words, you could redefine this question, this $600 billion question, to be about whether the stock market specifically is pricing this correctly. Are investors, in other words, pricing the AI build-out and the race to AGI in an appropriate way? This, I think, is an interesting and complex question. On the one hand, this gap between infrastructure build-out and realized revenue becomes a lot more relevant, especially in the short term, which is, of course, the horizon that Wall Street investors have. The factors that Khan identifies, such as GPU stockpiles growing, the depreciation of capital assets, things like that all will have an impact on that question. Of course, on the flip side, there remains the big open question or X factor of how valuable AGI will actually be how transformative, in other words, these technologies are at maturation, and of course, how long it takes to get to that state. These are all reasonable things to debate, and there is likely going to be a lot of money made not only betting on the future, but going short on how fast that future gets here. Ultimately, though, that question is not about AI. Not really, at least. It's a question about market pricing. I've often said that one of the things that makes this moment so strange is that usually when you have a technology paradigm shift, the stage that we're in happens almost entirely in the private markets. There isn't the same sort of role for the big companies, the big tech players, as there is when it comes to AI. These dynamics are simply unlike anything we've seen before, and because of that, there is a much wider diversity of opinions around how it plays out and how it should be valued in the short term. Unfortunately, our media infrastructure is not capable of dealing with that sort of nuance and instead just focuses on the questions of whether everything's going to moon or whether everything is a big bubble or whether it's both and when the bubble bursts and when the moon comes. Certainly, there is interesting evidence that the leading companies do believe that something about the dynamics now are unlikely to last forever. In the middle of June, the information wrote a piece about exactly this. NVIDIA's Jensen Huang is on top of the world, so why is he worried? The piece is about how Jensen is pushing NVIDIA into software and cloud services and trying to diversify its revenue away from just the data centers. Writes the information, Huang told colleagues he was worried cloud server providers such as AWS and Microsoft, which collectively have been buying about half of NVIDIA's AI server chips in recent quarters, weren't moving fast enough to set up new data centers and power sources to accommodate the chips they had ordered. Huang and his colleagues have also focused on countering the next threat to the business, the likelihood that demand for NVIDIA's chips will eventually slow down. Now, NVIDIA's answers to that, at least for the purposes of this podcast, matter less than the fact that that's what they're thinking about. On top of that, Enterprises are also getting more sophisticated about how to appropriately integrate AI and what does and doesn't matter in terms of what they're buying. Stephanie Palazzolo, once again from The Information, recently wrote, businesses want slower AI models and that might hurt NVIDIA. She writes, there's surely more money in business-focused AI services than in the consumer market, at least in the near term. 
By the same token, though, businesses have become much more focused on the cost-effectiveness and returns on AI than on finding the fastest, most advanced model. One sign of that is the rise of batch processing. Today, popular consumer AI products like ChatGPT and Perplexity provide users with near-instantaneous responses, otherwise known as real-time inference. However, businesses don't always need immediate responses and are often willing to wait hours, days, or even weeks for responses, as long as they don't have to shell out as much money. Founders of cloud and inference providers have told me there's growing pressure from business customers for this kind of flexibility, otherwise known as batch processing. To me, this is a complete counterweight to this idea that we're all just in a bubble. It shows a sophistication on the part of enterprises to figure out which types of use cases they need AI for and on what timescale. The point of all of this is that ultimately, if you want an informed view of whether AI is in a bubble or not, you must get beyond the simplicity of that question. The answer to whether there is a Wall Street market bubble in terms of how big tech is priced is fundamentally different to whether there is a bubble in hype surrounding enterprise use cases. And that, of course, is fundamentally different than how AI is showing up in individual consumers' lives. It is obviously the unspoken mission of the AI Daily Brief to help you parse through this stuff, and I appreciate you hanging out as we do. For now, though, that is going to do it for today's AI Daily Brief. Until next time, peace.